Andamayang Buddha Vitutingaro Mase. Now let us chant in praise of the Buddha. Yo so Tata Gato Araha Sama Sambudo. Lajata Gata is the pure one, the perfectly enlightened one. Vicha Charana Sampano. He is impeccable in conduct and understanding. Sugato, the accomplished one. Loka Vidu, the knower of the worlds. Anuttaro Purisadama Sarati. He trains perfectly those who wish to be trained. Sata Deva Manusanang. He is teacher of gods and humans. Buddha Bhagavā, He is awake and holy. Yawi Manglo Kang Sate Wakang Samara Kang Sabramakang. In this world with its gods, demons, and kind spirits, Sasamana Brahmaning Pachang Sadeva Manusang Sayang Abhinya Sachikatava Bhavedesi. Its seekers and sages, celestial and human beings, he has by deep insight revealed the truth. Yodhamang dese siya di kalayanang maje kalayanang pariyosa na kalayanang. He has pointed out the Dhamma, beautiful in the beginning, beautiful in the middle, beautiful in the end. Satang sapiyanjana kevala paripunang parisudang brahmachariyang pakasesi. He has explained the spiritual life of complete purity in its essence and conventions. Tamahang bhagavan tangabhi bhujayami tamaha Bhagavan Tang Sirasa Namami. I chant my praise to the Blessed One. I bow my head to the Blessed One. Andamayang Dhamma Bitutinga Roma Se. Chant and praise the Yo The Dhamma is well expounded by the Blessed One. Sandhidiko, apparent here and now, akaliko, timeless. Ehipasiko, encouraging investigation. Opanaiko, leading inwards. Bajatang vedita bo in to be experienced individually by the wise. Tamahang damang abipu chayami tamahang tama sirasa namami. I chant my praise to this teaching. I bow my head to this truth. Andamayang sangha vidutinga roma se. Now let us chant in praise of the Sangha. Yo so supati pano magawato sawaka sango. They are the blessed ones, disciples who have practiced well. Ujjupati pano magawato sawaka sango. 
who have practiced directly Nyaya Patipano Bhagavato Savaka Sango who have practiced insightfully Samichi Patipano Bhagavato Savaka Sango those who practice with integrity Yadida Chatari Purisa Yukani Yata Purisambugala That is the four pairs, the eight kinds of noble beings Esa Bhagavato Sawaka Sango These are the Blessed One's disciples Ahunayo such ones are worthy of gifts, Pahuneyo, worthy of hospitality, Dakineyo, worthy of offerings, Anjali Karaniyo, worthy of respect, Anutarang Bunyaki Tanglokatsa, they Incomparable goodness to arise in the world. Tamahang sangang abhipujaya, Tamahang sangang sirasa namami. I chant my praise to this sangha, I bow my head to this sangha. This morning, <clears throat> just observe the, be the observer of the mood that you are experiencing at this time. The sense of puto, the knowing of the object, which is a kind of emotional state or mood, whether it's bright or dull, peaceful, not peaceful, whatever it may be. Not trying to make it any, into anything, but just observing it, getting to know this is this is the way it is at this moment here and now.
So this is what I call reflection. You're, you're not trying to make, get anything or do anything about it. You're not trying to, if your mood is, isn't very good, to try to make it better. It's just being this knowing, this observer. This is, like I was saying last night, a refuge, the Bhutto, knowing the Dhamma. <clears throat> so this relationship, subject to object, is changing from <clears throat> personal interpretation, my mood, and then the sense of, this. I'm, I feel like this now, and uh, I should or shouldn't, or I want another kind of state of mind. Uh, it's, it's a good mood or a bad mood. These are the this, this is the worldly, the worldly condition that we we interpret life from worldly conditions. Now, what I'm suggesting is observing things from Dhamma, from the level of consciousness in which the the mood arises and ceases. So you're the consciousness, the puto knowing that the emotional energy, mental state, mood is like this right now. It's just the way it is. And the attitude of allowing it to be what it is. There's nothing to do about it but just observing it. Uh, it's uh, the Dhamma is what we call Santitiko Akariko. We just chanted this, the morning reflections. Santitiko, apparent here and now, Akariko, timeless. So this, these are words that suggest of just the only way that you can, you know the. The reality of now is to be mindful here and now. The time is now. Place is here. And the observer is the Bhutto, and the object is Dhamma. So this is going against all the conditioning, worldly, cultural, personal conditioning uh, that one has acquired. Time is, is our reality, self is our reality. Um, we, we can live our lives always for the next thing, a better future, uh, tomorrow, next year. Uh, we work hard now. Uh, we, we, you, you might have this idea that you've got to practice hard now in order to become enlightened in the future. So you can just notice this, this sense of I'm not enlightened and I've got to practice during this retreat in order to <clears throat> become enlightened. I've got to get something I don't have yet by sitting for hours, concentrating my mind, keeping the silence, and hopefully I might become enlightened in the future. So these words convey the sense of the future is where you're, you hopefully will get what you want. And here and now is just, you know, you've got to do it. 
your, your sense of yourself, your ego is motivating you to work hard at, in order to get something in the future. So this is a, this is a, this is the worldly. This is the way the world operates. This is the way we think and what uh, what we believe in is the world and the future as a, as the um, where we hope to get what we want. So this is a kind of very immediate shift out of that perceptual range to awareness here and now. So right now, the way it is, is we can be aware of just the posture. The body, your own body is here and now. And we use the reflection on the four postures, the sitting, Standing, walking, lying down postures. These are the ordinary postures, uh, movements of our body that we use during the day and night. They're not special kind of exotic postures, just sitting, standing, walking, lying down. So bring attention right now just to the, to the body, your own body. This has this experience, the reality of it sitting, its sensations, this, uh, this uh, sitting posture here and now, as it, as it is right now at this moment. So you begin to notice it's the pressure of sitting, the body, uh, the pressure, the sensation of pressure as you're sitting on the, the mat, aware of maybe the, your, whether you feel comfortable, uncomfortable, pain, or no pain, or uh, Heat, cold, is like this. We're just being the observer, so we're not. We're just noticing it's like this. Feeling cold is like this, or feeling too hot is like this. The pressure of the body sitting, or the your clothes uh, touching your skin, your hands, your feet, just kind of sweeping through, observing the, the reality and experience of sitting at this very moment.
<clears throat> so there's a, a sense of relaxed attention. Sometimes they, like an oxymoron, we say attention usually means, in, when we use it in the military, we say attention is a command, and you go very stiff. You, you contract. But this is a relaxed attention, so it's not an imperative. Uh, you have to force yourself into some rigid posture, but it's an encouragement to open, to observe, the sense of relaxed attentiveness. Openness, receptivity, and and then being aware of, of the body sitting is like this. Nothing special about it. There's not, nothing fantastic that you're going to experience. But sitting is what we do every day. But we may never notice it. We sit down. We start worrying about the future, planning this, uh, regretting things of the past. Uh, and on and on like this. So we, we're sitting, but we're, our minds are all caught up in in our thoughts and feelings. But now we're just, this is an opportunity to just be with the reality and the experience of this body sitting, it's like this. And so it's not like anything you have to concentrate and focus, you know, Get it? It's just opening to to this very natural state of being. The physical body is like this. And another thing that's happening right now to all of us is breathing. We're all breathing. Uh, so this, we can bring attention just to the uh, simple function of breathing as we experience. So many of you uh, develop techniques of anapanasati or, or rising, falling of the abdomen or uh, the attention at the nostrils, the inhaling, exhaling. I'm not really interested in where you notice the breathing, you know, but just observe, the, be the knower, the inhalation, exhalation is like this. So you're just observing, being the observer of this body's breathing. You're not, your ego's not trying to make it breathe or or uh, make comments about how well or, or how horribly you breathe. It's just breathing is like this, inhaling, exhaling.
Now the attitude, I'm not so interested in teaching you meditation techniques, uh, but uh, as a, uh, an attitude, this retreat is trying to encourage an attitude rather than uh, developing a, a certain technique. Uh, so the attitude is, if you have the right attitude, then the, any technique you so prefer will be, you can benefit from. <clears throat> but if you're always using some very, very good technique from the state of ignorance, uh, it will <laughs> still end up with ignorance. <laughs> Uh, it's not in the technique so much. That's important is the attitude. Now, just uh, uh, the big, the first fetter that blocks stream entry uh, is the sakya ditti. Now, uh, sakya ditti is Pali word uh, and and translated generally as personality view. Uh, so it's a conditioned sense of self. It's uh, it's the the ego, as we use that word now in in modern parlance. Uh, my ego, e- egotistical, a sense of myself, my self-importance, who I am, my identities, me and mine. Uh, and so this this uh, sakya ditti, This is the the fetter. There's there's ten fetters to Arahant. So, and the very first fetter is Sakya Ditti. So, it's not getting rid of an ego or trying to suppress personality, but it's, it's being able to recognize Sakya Ditti. So we're not no longer limited by that, by the conditioned sense of self. <clears throat> so as long as you believe you are a condition, if you really committed to the sense that I, you're the body you have, what's going to happen to you? You're going to get old and die. And uh, that's, because that's what bodies do. And so this is, um, you know, that's the, the that's the, you, what you identify with, you become like that. You take on that condition and uh, you live within that limitation. And you experience life from this limited position of I'm this physical body. So if it's a, uh, Young body, old body, male body, female body, whether you're black or white, whatever, the identity is, is uh, with, uh, this is me, I'm this body. Now, the, the very fact that you can observe the body, just like we were doing, uh, observing the sitting posture, now this awareness is not sakya ditti. But I think, my, how do I sit properly? Or my body, this sense of my body, my sitting posture. Uh, this, is, this is sakya ditti. So as long as we, we, we are, we, now when we meditate, we start our meditation from this illusion of Sakya Ditti, <clears throat> then the result will always be, uh, we'll be disappointed uh, in our practice. For example, I'm going on this retreat in order to practice hard to become enlightened in the future. Uh, I'm a mess now, I've got all kinds of problems, and I need to work hard on myself in order to become healthy, normal person, personality in the future. This is Sakya Ditti. 
No, just the fact, I'm not enlightened, I'm this ignorant person, neurotic, have hang-ups, fears, obsessions, which I shouldn't have, and I've got to practice in order to get rid of them, uh, so that in the future I will not have these obsessions, and I will be, uh, hopefully attain uh, some kind of peace of mind or liberation in the future. This is Sakya Ditti. So if this is, if you start out on this retreat from this, without investigating this perception, you know, so right now just observe the sense of, I am, I'm this person practicing meditation in order to get something, that good result in the future is like this. So, it's like an inner listening. You kind of repeat this to yourself. I am uh, this, uh, this kind of person that has to do something now in order to become uh, something better in the future. Be the listener. So I mean it's quite intentionally creating this sense of I am this person doing something now to become in the future. So you, you're listening. You're, the puto is listening to the Dhamma, the condition of Sakya Ditti. It's not saying anything, it's not condemning it, it's just noticing. And that which is aware of your thinking, I am this person. That awareness is not a thought. That's consciousness and awareness. And then the thought is created, you know, the language, whatever language you think in, it is a created, man-made, created condition. Language is created by human beings. You know, it's not coming from nature. It doesn't fall down from the heavens or anything. It's language is, you know, the creation of of a human in a, human groups. So we all there's many different languages. So we're using whatever language, but we're looking at it, that which is aware of yourself thinking. Now this is this is quite simple, you know. And I deliberately think I am, you know. Be think about I like and I don't like, and I want and I don't want, and and uh, but listen. You're being the listener or the buto. This is your refuge. You took refuge last night, buto, knowing the thoughts, thinking, language arises and ceases. It's thinking is, a, is obviously impermanent. You can't, you know, you go from one thought to the next. To, if you just say the same thought over and over, you can kind of sustain uh, the same thought just by in, 
intentionally thinking it again and again, but the nature of thought is to move, to change. Goes from one thought to the next, one word to the next word. But the awareness of thinking That's a self-sustaining consciousness awakened to the conditioning of the thinking process. So we're looking at thinking now in terms of Dhamma. It is a Nietzsche. It's a condition. All conditions are impermanent. It's like this. So this, uh, in, you, in starting from, like in a retreat, it has a beginning. Like this is the first, uh, first uh, full day. At the beginning, it will have an ending. Uh, it's uh, it's like this. You feel uh, peaceful or confused. Things will come up in consciousness, uh, uh, emotions and. Uh, the same, you know, the conditions change, the weather and, and uh, all kinds of other conditions affect this moment. But our refuge is not in trying to control the conditions uh, so that we have a good retreat, because that's Sakya Ditti, isn't it? I want to have complete control over all the conditions so that I can have a peaceful retreat is Sakya Ditti. So if this is how, you know, our modus operandi for this retreat, you know, if you can control the conditions, then you feel, I've had a really good retreat. Whoopee. But if you, if everything goes wrong, you, you get angry with the turkeys, And when somebody flushes the toilet at midnight, <laughs> and that's, uh, you know, without being aware of it, then you, oh, it's a terrible retreat. And the roommate was always snoring, and it just ruined my whole retreat because you, you couldn't control the condition. So this is Sakya Ditti. You know, this is, this is uh, the, the conditioned ego. So it's a control freak kind of condition. It always wants, always to benefit itself. And, uh, and this is, you know, this is uh, what we start with, as our modus operandi is. I start from, I'm practicing now to get something in the future. Now this is a normal kind of Sakya Ditti. I'm not criticizing, but in saying you shouldn't feel, you shouldn't have Sakya Ditti. What I'm encouraging you is to know, investigate, be an expert on Sakya Ditti, on personality view. It's created through thought, depends on thinking, on, on believing in your thoughts, believing that you are this person, this body, this personality, totally committed to, to these conditions, uh, and living your life in order to, to uh, support this illusion, this is ignorance. So 
So on this retreat, this is a chance to just observe Sakyadidi, get to know it. So that whatever form it takes, no matter how subtle or convincing uh, Sakyadidi can become, because it certainly can be, you know, it, it, um, you, 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 you find your strength in knowing what it is rather than uh, being deluded, caught into it, or just trying to suppress your emotions, denying self. So this is what we call awakened consciousness, and that's what Bhutto is. Buddha, awakened consciousness. It's not conditioned conscious. It's not conditions that arise and cease in consciousness. It's, a, it's pure consciousness awakened before the conditions arise. And when the conditions cease, it's still it still, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't arise and cease with the conditions. The conditions arise and cease in the consciousness. So these are, this morning, this is, this is a way of of uh, centering or, you know, be, uh, during this retreat, the, the, the posture, you use that because the body is here and now. And you don't create the body. The body is natural condition. It's not, it's not mine, it's not... I don't, I didn't create it. It's this way, you know, it's a, it's a, like the trees, uh, like the turkeys, uh, like the dogs and cats, the birds, the planet itself, uh, it's, it's just part of nature. Being born, it's a condition that's born and gets old and dies. So the body is is uh, to be seen as as a na- as a natural condition, rather than seeing it from the person. Like vanity always makes it personal. Wanting you know judging ourselves on how how we look, our identity with uh, with our appearance, with our age, with whether we're male or female. Our identity with with uh, race, color of the skin. All these are, uh, you know, this is this is sakya ditti. Because uh, consciousness is isn't we we don't create consciousness either. It's not culturally. And it's natural. So notice that that what is truly natural that is not me and mine that I didn't create is the physical body. And if it were up to me, uh, if I created my body, I would have created a better body than this one. So, I mean, it's obviously not mine. (laughs) But I can identify with it. I can, you know, I can, um, you know, my body and, and, you know, then vanity, you know, we live in a culture that's obsessed with with appearance, how you look. and so it's full of this encouragement to try to make you know self attractive or 
you, you know, even the most beautiful, good-looking people are critical of the of their features. You know, the nose is too big or too small. Or the eyes, you'd like I like my eyes a little wider. They're too narrow. Or my hair. I wish I had better, you know, thicker hair. Or whatever. You know, vanity is a cruelty, isn't it? You look into a mirror and you think, I don't like this, I don't like that, these wrinkles, I don't want them, I don't, uh, gray hair, I don't want that, uh, on and on like that. We're picking apart, we're criticizing, we're, we're saying, I don't like this body. It's not, I wanted to change it and make it what I like. This is cruelty. This is Sakya Ditti, isn't it? It's, it's an endless cruelty uh, of criticizing this body. But this mindfulness of body is not cruel. It's accepting the body as it is. You know, it's like this. Not making any comments about how, how it should be or that it's yours. It is, it's a natural condition, just like the trees. the flowers, the animals. And then consciousness. You didn't create that. When you're born, you know, the, the body is conscious body. So it's, you know, if it's unconscious, it's dead. So I mean, if it, it's a conscious body. And so these are in terms of natural conditions. Then, uh, then what you do create after, after birth is you acquire the sense of yourself. You're, you're a, I'm a baby. Your mother says, you, you're my little baby. So you be, I'm a baby. Uh, it says, you're a little boy. Oh, I'm a boy. I'm a little girl. You're American. You're an American girl. And American girls should be like this, and on and like that. So we get the cultural conditioning. Uh, you know, that's what we acquire after we're born. That's not, those are artificial, those are artifices, conventions. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with them, but they, we're trying to put them in their place so that we're not limited by the conventions that human beings create. So in, uh, in awareness, Awareness is where we're actually awakening to pure consciousness. So we can't create anything. We're not, we're not about creating uh, a refined conscious state. We're just letting go. And so it's the attitude of openness, receptivity, relaxed attention, observing, witnessing. Now these words I find helpful in conveying this, this attitude that I'm uh, encouraging you to develop, this attitude of just relaxed attention, open, uncritical receptivity to the present. It's like this.
So in this openness, you know, you can, this includes the body, the posture of the body, it includes the breathing, the inhaling, exhaling function of your body. It includes sensation, so you're aware of being hot or cold, you're aware of pain or, or pleasure, of sound, of smell, taste, touch, sight. This open mindfulness then includes everything. Everything belongs in this moment that's happening right now. Good or bad, pleasant or unpleasant, it all belongs. So that this, this uh, mindfulness is embracing everything, all conditioned phenomena at this very moment.
Now consciousness is uh, <clears throat> it's an intelligent knowing not conditioned. It has no, it has no boundary. Like it has six elements in the Pali scripture. You know, the four elements, the earth, fire, water, and air, this is about the conditioned world. <clears throat> so these all have forms, limits, and boundaries. You know, a thought has a form, or emotion has a beginning and ending, or, uh, you know, whatever, you know, solid, liquid, air, fire, all these are about arising and ceasing, beginning and ending. Shape and form, quality, big and small, beautiful, ugly. Now when you get into space and consciousness, these are the other two. Space has no boundary. You know, so when you, when you just look at the space in this room, in this meditation hall, you know, it's here and now, it's not, you don't create this space, but you may not notice it. You just take it for granted. So you come in here and you notice maybe the thing. You notice this bell, you notice the shrine, uh, people, the uh, tankas, and so forth. And then you, you notice the things. You, you like this, you don't like that. The space you may not notice at all. You just, it's just, and even though it's here all the time, and wherever you are, you don't, it isn't confined to this meditation hall. It's all around. You go outside, wherever you go, space. It's real. It's here and now. It's not, it's not like refined, special, esoteric reality, is it? It's very ordinary. Space is, is ordinary. And it's here all the time and it has no boundary. So you're recognizing that that, that 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 which is here and now, like space, just visually on the visual uh, through visual consciousness, you can observe space is boundless. Where does it end? Now, scientists and that have views about space ending somewhere, but in terms of here and now, uh, that's not important. You know, we, we don't know that. We can't see that at this moment, but we can be aware that space right now, where does it end? You know, it goes on and on and on and on. Consciousness is like that. It has no boundary. It's an immeasurable where uh, we tend to think of consciousness as, as uh, thinking and the brain and, and that was, so we, we limit consciousness and we think, I've even heard people say that, that uh, animals are not conscious. And what do they mean by that? You know, they, they mean they don't think like human beings probably. But, but this is, uh, this is ridiculous because consciousness is natural, boundless, space and consciousness, earth, fire, water, and air. So in, in the Vipassana meditation we contemplate that all conditioned phenomena is, it, we can use these four elements for contemplating the body, the uh, emotions, the um, memories, thinking process, what we see, hear, smell, taste, touch, the very act of having eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, a brain, a mind, 
These are forms, these are conditions, earth, fire, water, and air, space has no bound, it's immeasurable, consciousness immeasurable. So this is why sati uh, is, our, is our door to this, back into this pure consciousness. Like, you know, before you were born, or before you, you became a person, there's consciousness. And now you're experiencing consciousness through a form. So this, this means you're, you're conscious from this point where you are at this moment. Like consciousness right now, I'm sitting here, this body sitting here. And consciousness, the body is experiencing consciousness. from this point. Now how I interpret is, uh, you know, condition, you know, I'm sitting here, my body, what I like and don't like and, and so forth, then I'm creating uh, conditions into consciousness. You know, my preferences, my prejudices, biases, cultural attitudes, assumptions, Emotional habits arise when somebody uh, says, Ajahn Sameno, you're a great teacher, and then I feel happy. And somebody says, you're, you're a disgrace to Buddhism, then I feel angry. Emotions change according to, <laughs> to other conditions, you know, on a personal level. Uh, people can praise or blame or whatever, and then the emotions uh, are, are, you know, according to whether, you know, I'm, can praise makes me happy, blames make, blame makes me angry. But consciousness is behind it all, you know, so whether anger or happiness arise, my refuge is in this consciousness, once you recognize it. This is reality, this is not subtle, esoteric magic that, that you know, very, only very advanced, spiritually advanced people can get to. This is quite ordinary. This is not about, you know, being a highly evolved spiritual, uh, gifted, uh, spiritually advanced being. It's about being human. Being a human being that has this potential for seeing things as they are. And still, you know, within the limitation of a human body, and whatever age it is, and so forth, it's not, that's not, those are not obstructions. It's just a matter of recognizing. So now uh, that's enough for this morning and uh, invite you to breakfast.